there, internet, Mogwai here, and I got another Legends of Runeterra video for you guys today, and today we continue our landmark week with day number four. We are going to be playing none other than the Hex Core Foundry, a landmark that you guys haven't been asking me to showcase ever since it was released, and one that I've been very excited to jump into, but the other ones have been so exciting as well, and there have already been like uh, other content creators, uh, you know, curating decks around the Hex Core Foundry. Uh, one deck in particular to, you know, mention is the die, uh, the die hard, <laughs> the die hard Teemo, the go hard Teemo with shadow owls, right? Um, I believe grappler is the one who, who made that, uh, it is a variant that's like very low curve that tries to, uh, capitalize on, you know, the extra card draw from hex core foundry plays units like veteran investigator and combines that with go hard to, uh, you know, get some pack your bags value going on. Right. Uh, I think it's a, it's a really neat take. Uh, it's a cool deck. I do, I do believe it's a little bit too dependent on hex core foundry though, to be, uh, super consistent. And I want to do something different, uh, even though uh, combining Teemo with uh, Shadow Isles, aka Bad Trip, has been something that I've, I've always been uh, an advocate of in the past. Ever since Sejuani was released from Rising Tides, I do believe uh, Teemo Sejuani is the most competitive variant of the Mushroom archetype. Because Sejuani works extremely well with Teemo, now so more than ever due to the release of the Ballistic Bot. Like, this deck has an ex out outstanding curve. Like, Teemo Sejuani has never had a turn one, turn two like this before. We have Teemo turn one, which is always fantastic to see, naturally, especially in a deck with Sejuani, in which we want to get, you know, a ping going on turn one. And if we get lucky, they can draw one of those mushrooms turn two. And just like that, we are two out of five uh, level up progression for Sejuani, right? And... Ballistic Bot just helps patch all that. Ballistic Bot gives us an ignition every turn that will allow us to deal damage to the Nexus directly and work for Sejuani's level up, but that's not the only thing this does. This gives us a spell every turn, generates as a free spell. We don't have to draw or do anything to get this to trigger the likes of Starlit Seer and the Puff Gap Peddler. Also, even the Neandroid as well. We have a bunch of two drops and three drops that function as engines in a way. Uh, may it be via Augment or just because they are units that uh, have an, an effect proc when we go for a spell. By doing this, uh, combining the likes of, uh, you know, Ballistic Bot and the Ignitions with uh, Chump Wump and the uh, Mushroom Clouds, and uh, all the other spells that we have in the deck, we can uh, either utilize Starlet Seer to pump up our units, which, you know, uh, we have several of them with Elusive, like Neandroid, Ezreal, and Teemo, and the Overwhelm uh, Sejuani, as Sejuani. So having huge units with these keywords uh, definitely does go a long way. Or we can just fill up our opponent's uh, deck with Puff Caps as we're combining all these spells together, or we can do both. You know, because we're running a full set of Troll Chant and a couple of copies of Elixir of Iron. <laughs> I don't even know how I pronounce that. Elixir of Iron. Because we have two copies of this, uh, we are able to, for a very cheap price, protect our engines from uh, damage-based removal. And uh, this, these couple of Elixir of Irons really does go a long way in preserving our key units as we're wearing a full set of Mystic Shot, a long set of uh, one-off of Get Excited, and a full set of Aftershock. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are playing Piltover and Zon right now, it doesn't matter what deck it is. My advice, play three copies of Aftershock. This card is too good in this meta. 50% of the ladder is Grand Plaza. This is the best, like, direct counter to Grand Plaza, if you don't count Targon's, like, own card, right? It, it is the best landmark removal because it is useful in other scenarios, right? The only, the biggest downside to this card is the fact that it is slow speed. So you can't chain it alongside another one to take down a bigger target, for example. But having that said, it is just absolutely essential and super important this deck. And one of the reasons why we've had as much success as we've had, we actually have a positive win rate against Grand Plaza decks because... We have Aftershock and we're able to stall it because if those decks don't have Grand Plaza, their ability to pick off your board and threaten you is uh, obviously 
significantly weaker. So the objective is to level up uh, Sejuani and uh, get her on the board and then just nullify any sort of mid-range deck out there. Any sort of deck that relies on units will be completely shut down by Sejuani's ability of just frostbiting all enemies whenever we deal damage, especially considering we're playing buff caps and we got ignitions and even fast speed uh, damage on top of that. Iterative Improvement is a card that I really like in this deck because it's extremely flexible. It can be used to get us multiple copies of Ballistic Bots you know, to get some extra damage going on. It can be used on Starlit Seer to get a second Starlit Seer on the board and just get some massive buffs onto our, our deck going on. It can also be used on Puffcat Peddler if we want to go turbo with our Mushroom Generation, and which may be ideal, especially if we are... Uh, setting up a Hexcore Foundry. Hexcore Foundry is not, you know, unlike Scar Grounds or the Monasterio for Hrana or obviously Grand Plaza, we don't want to really play Hexcore Foundry on curve most of the time unless we're facing a very greedy late game deck. Uh, otherwise, we want to build up the mushrooms first. We want to work on setting up the Puff Gap Peddler. We want to get Chump Wump in there. We want to get these uh, mushroom spells going on. And once we have a good amount of mushrooms in the opponent's deck, then we drop the Hexcore Foundry. We get drawing so we don't run out of gas and we start dealing damage to our opponent in the process. Uh, we're playing two copies of Sejuani and a one-off of Ezreal because I think Ezreal puts in a lot of work in this deck. We have just enough targets here to uh, justify his level up, especially because we are running a couple of copies of Harsh Wind and uh, something important to note is that Troll Chant also helps you level up Ezreal. It's something that people miss out uh, at first a lot. Uh, Ezreal leveled up can allow our Ignitions to deal double damage. It allows us to ping our opponent for one damage every time we go for a Mushroom Cloud, uh, which we can generate multiple copies of, even though we only have three copies of Chump Wump because we're playing three copies of Iterative Improvement. That's what I'm talking about with this card's flexibility. If we need more Mushroom, because we already have, if we need more, if we need more Mushrooms, <laughs> we we gotta get high. If we if we absolutely must, we uh, and we already have Puffcat Peddlers on the board. We don't need more engines per se. We can use this on the Chump Wump, and we get a five four Chump Wump for four mana that will grant us four or sorry two more copies of Mushroom Cloud, and that is the list right there. Very very fun to play. Feels really competitive. Neandroid gives us another potential win condition. You know, as for every Mushroom Cloud that we're playing, we're getting plus one attack on this thing. And uh, overall, this is just, uh, Timo Sejuani is the best that it's ever been. And it just feels awesome to see archetypes that have existed for a bit being just solidified and, and reach this power level thanks to this new expansion. Uh, really excited to showcase the gameplay for you guys today. And hopefully you will enjoy it. That's basically all I got to say though. Have a soul day. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for daily Legends of Runeterra content. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, here we go. As we're facing Grand Plaza, obviously, <laughs> the entire meta is Grand Plaza. So we're gonna. I I, I like the uh, the Blissed Box. I also like Ezreal, even though in this matchup, um, I'm not so sure about having Ezreal on curve. I'm gonna drop these two just to see if I can find stuff like Aftershock. It, it is important for us to be able to deal with Grand Plaza uh, on curve. This is why we play. This is why we're going to a full set of, of, of Grand Plaza. We lose one mana in the exchange, but we get rid of that huge threat. We can always deal with that later as well. Once I stand papers, now faces. Now, Ha <laughs> ha
<laughs> We're also very close to uh, getting to the level up there. We're gonna go for the aftershock again. Deny the plaza. The ocean whispers in secrets. Uh, that's fearsome. That's a little bit annoying, but I guess we can just uh, knock you out. I take six damage. Is that something we can afford? Always forward. Well, because he chose to attack with this as well, he didn't really get to uh, make use of that. Meanwhile, we okay, we get we get the ping there. Wherever they hide. Okay, cool, cool story, girl. Shots our course. Evolve or die. The mom's still like a yodel in uniform. Fortune favors the bold. The ocean is no place for the weak. This is not the way. All right, so I'm thinking here, uh, I definitely want to make use of my harsh winds. And I definitely, I definitely got to clear you. So for now, what I'm going to do... Is I'm going to block like this. Quinn lives, but still requires one more attack. He goes for gem there. We take the hit. Mushrooms 
in the morning. And can you improve perfection? Oh, I never know what hit him. Progress. Dash, get it. So I'm thinking here, like, I, I would like to play this. When he attacks, if I don't kill him here, he has 42 mushrooms, and I'm going to make him draw two cards. But there is a chance that he doesn't. So am I better off? What if I play Chump Wump here? What if I play Chump Wump? If he attacks, Chump Wump will be moved away, but I can still block with here. That's four. So that means I take six... 7 damage. It's always safer to do this. We play Chump Womp. We Ignition. There's still a chance that they draw 2, 2 Puff Caps and it's over. But if they if they don't, if they live... You know, because the, uh, the variance could be very bad. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Always believe, baby! <laughs> Never underestimate the power of the scouts you tell him, Teemo! Fucking tell him. Nice. All right, so I've been testing with, uh, you know, I've been testing all sorts of different decks, right? And I, I keep uh, dumping my rank because <laughs> I, I, I focus on like one one deck, I showcase it, and then I move to something else, right? And when I try that out, I, I drop down a Platinum 4 experimenting, and then I climb back up. So hopefully I I escape this loop and I actually start climbing. Like I, uh, I, I I'm actually being slower climbing this season than ever but that's because i'm there's so many things that i want to try that I, I i really don't like my rank is like the least of my priorities right now but i i will start pushing for for master soon uh for those of you who care honestly because I, I don't know why um you would that much anyways round two zed riven honestly i'm surprised we haven't seen that like earlier I, we have seen a lot of like riven lee sin but not with zed uh, I don't know how I feel about, like, this opener. I think in general, even the, um... Even the harsh winds. I'm gonna mulligan everything. Man, bless, bless Aftershock, honestly. Okay, I wanna, I wanna play Ballistic Bot first. Witness perfection, meat bags. He could have Ravenous Flock, for all I know. But what I want is actually very simple. Close start it. Really, really, really want to uh, make use of this engine right here. I, I want to go for iterative improvement, to be honest. But, uh, you know, priorities do change. I think I can take I think I can take the remainder of this hit. Even if he does have twin disciplines, it's just not enough. He needs stuff like double elixir of wrath or something. Okay. He's going for damage, I guess. It's a lot of damage. Without a doubt, a lot of damage. But and mind to aim its strike. System upgrade. Rise, metal brethren. Prime and ready. Right, 
So there's two fragments in his hand. Wisdom is strength. This could be our end, though. Because we, we don't have the ability to, to kill that because of uh, Aftershock being slow speed. If they have Overwhelm, it could prove to be too much. I go ways to form in mushrooms. Oh, uh, don't tell me you got you got the plus two and the overwhelm. Oh shit. Okay, we we can we can technically survive. Blessed by snow and stars. Yeah, this is tough. We need harsh winds, basically. Um, or Sejuani. No, that's that's too strong. I've been waiting for this. Good game. I have many things. GG. Uh, a little bit too fast for us. I don't know why he face bombs. I guess he was disappointed with the victory. I I can't say I do. I can't say I relate. Uh, yeah, very fast paced. Um, we have we have like we definitely have resources. Like we have, you know, our harsh winds, and uh, we do have removal. But that that was a case in which uh, aftershock was a little bit too. It was it, it was a little bit too slow, right? Like uh, we, we don't deal well with like such crazy like snowbally attacks like that. Even though we do have frostbites, we really maybe I should have kept the harsh winds in my opener. I think I I had one. Um, if I recall correctly, I'm not sure, but uh, I think if there's anything to take back from that game is is my my mulligans because uh, my opponent applied a lot of pressure and due to my draws, it was very difficult for me to like actually stabilize. So yeah, uh, that that's one of the weaknesses this deck can have for sure. Let's go for another one. Okay, Dr. Grant with Zoe Diana. This ain't no meme, ladies and gentlemen. This is actually a net deck from Mr. Bruised by God. So I am gonna take a look. So I'm gonna I'm gonna really Zoe Diana. So they're basically playing atrocity. That's basically it. Okay. It's good to know. Any landmarks or anything like that? Nope. Which means these aftershocks should go down. Uh, any removal? I think I'm gonna do a full mulligan actually. Yeah. I really don't need that many spells. I just uh, I gotta find stuff like Ballistic Bot or Teemo. Uh, double Harsh Winds. Honestly, like this is the counter to their atrocities, right? So I, I don't mind having this in my opener, especially considering I already have the Ballistic Bot. Okay, so there is Pill Cascade. I repeat, there is Pill Cascade. Clad in shining sunlight. I wanna go I think I wanna go ballistic. Do I wanna go ballistic by I may as well deal with Zoe now, I think. I slowed down my Sejuani level up by a little bit, but I think that's fine. Oh, 
If I do things right, I can still level up by turn 7. I'm gonna go for the ignition because from this point onwards, I really have to work for the Sejuani level up. Let's try to go for the ignition first, pass over initiative. Watch them go low as uh, now we are out of hush range. We're out of hush range. Which allows us to do many things. So first of all... I, I like double ballistic back to be honest. Second, Zoe answered. Cleared off his board a little bit more. They don't—they're not playing unspeakable horror, so having shit on one health. As long as they're alive, I, I would like to draw into some stuff, though. Okay, there's another traveler. So he's—he's he's, he's definitely getting some really nutty value here. Um, I really want to find some engines though, because I'm. I definitely want to aftershock this. Probably should have aftershocked first, to be honest. To be fair, uh, we don't know if Diana's going down, so I am gonna ignition first. There haven't, there haven't been any nightfall triggers besides this, right? Like, I, I gotta respect Diana. Actually, no, the... the Stories of coils encircling the world. It's our time. Could they have the skies descend? That's one celestial. So the skies descend still costs 13 mana, so I don't have to worry about that. I can place Sejuani here. Can you improve perfection? Join me if you want to live. Really want to deal with this mountain scryer. Safety is 
The Android is also really nice, especially because I can combine the Android with um, with harsh winds. Is there? Shining gifts from the sky. I want to go for my ignitions. I don't need to play in the android now. Because these are fleeting anyways. So. Prime and ready. I may as well get as much value as possible. Star shaping. You can very easily have like double pale cascade or something like that, right? Very easily. You could also have a hush. I want to go for an aftershock. Because this way I threaten way more damage. I don't know what he can. He can have a hush, naturally. We will resist. We can very easily have a hush to deny like all this attack, right? But if we get that hush out of him just for pure damage, that's the kind of like that's the kind of way we got we want to get the hush out of him, right? All right, sweet. We stopped the harsh winds. This harsh winds gives us a lot of protection and Sejuani, baby. The strength of the sun and my faith are one. Haha! <laughs> Shut down, baby! Nice! We survived! We did. That's, like, I think these... Like, I've showcased more, like, the synergy with Sejuani, right? That's what I really like about Teemo Sejuani, and that's why I prefer... I mean, I think... I think go hard is also like a very solid approach at it because you're getting an alternate win condition in go hard, right? Though I do think go hard will be nerfed soon, which is why I didn't want to like dwell too much on that archetype, especially because I, I do think there are other weaknesses with combining with Shadow Owls, right? But with with Froyord, like Ballistic Bot with Sejuani is amazing, man. Like Neandroid becomes a very big threat, and combining these cards with Starlet Seer. And having heart, like I really like harsh wins in this deck. It really does give us the sense of like security, and that really like how that game played out. Especially considering that we did not draw Hexcore Foundry, and we really run out of gas. Like if we don't find Hexcore Foundry with this deck, we are, do have the like. It is very plausible that we just run out of steam, right? So, you know, it's important to not have too many of these early on, but it is also important to eventually find one, right? Which can be, uh, you know, easier said than done. So, but a uh, triple aftershock just. Definitely still worth it, just because of all the Grand Plazas running around, but it, it, it can be a little bit clunky in other matchups, but at the very least, it's a more expensive way to just deal three damage to whatever we want to, right? Which ultimately makes it fine. It's just slow speed. Like, that's that's the biggest issue, right? But, uh, anyways, let's go for another one. Okay, Aurelian Soul Ramp. Which means Targon's Peak. Oh, boy. I mean, Hex Core Foundry definitely feels like a, a must in this sort of scenario. I'm gonna drop the Harsh Winds and the Elixir of Iron. I'm gonna keep the uh, the Ezreal. I do want to find like early Teemo. I I, I want to do whatever I can to level up Sejuani because if I can level up Sejuani, I can potentially delay Aurelian Soul or complete or deny like altogether Aurelian Soul's level up. Right. I also really do like seeing uh, the Starlets here as well. 
That's the thing about this deck, man. My, my one drops, my two drops, I just, I feel great about seeing them. Like, I love all of them. Ballistic Bot, Starlight's here, like, they're all fantastic. I'm gonna drop these Starlights here. I'm not gonna develop uh, Ezreal here. I'm gonna go for an open attack, naturally. Yeah, try to uh, avoid, you know, going. We could see a Catalyst of Aeons here. For five mana, what are we? Perhaps, like, still the Catalyst of Aeons, right? Like, we're not particularly vulnerable to uh, Avalanche. Yeah, he just drops it. I gotta say my... I gotta uh, set up my engines anyways. All right, there is an avalanche. That could mean my opponent has like three avalanches. That would suck. Okay, I, I doubt that's the case anymore. Um, I do like the idea of just mystic shouting this, to be fair. And Get that the fuck out of here! This would be a good winter. Now we play our landmark. We establish landmark dominance. It's not your territory. It's my territory. That's a thick ballistic buck. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of that. Okay, just wants to draw a landmark, all right? Don't want to play that landmark, huh? Just bluffing the, the fact that I have another one. That's so great. Humanity is obsolete. We're gonna go iter iterative improvement. Um, I I want to use it on this. Uh, Ice Quake could be a thing. Oh, if mushrooms could Regardless, I want to play the Puff Gap Peddler. It'll buff up my Ballistic Bot. If I get my Ballistic Bot to 5 attack, then I can uh, really threaten this Trundle with an attack. <laughs> or I go for the Ignition, as it will trigger both of my Peddlers. He's down to 3 mana. Like, you know, I, you know, target speak, yeah, very spooky, but you're gonna be long gone before that happens. I could play Ezreal, but I'm more of a fan of just open attacking. I am the future. And killing him. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm really a fan of that. It's funny because, you know, uh, we managed to get our engine set up, but we didn't really get to punish our opponent with it. Like, because even if, our, if my opponent manages to, like, even if they had a revitalizing roar to heal them back up to full here, I would still feel very confident this game. Just because of the fact that I have two peddlers and a Starlet Seer on the board. Gotcha. Suspicious season! Pretty straightforward game. And good matchup for us. Alright, more Grand Plaza. Things and stuff. And we just gotta look for our Aftershocks. I'm gonna do, um... I mean, this is not a bad hand with the Puff Cat Peddler, but I really, really, really wanna get that, um... That Aftershock. We have three copies of that. We, I really want to be able to answer their their plaza. Turn one Teemo is not something you're mulligan away naturally, as we can work for the Sejuani level up immediately. Like we have a we have a good setup for Sejuani, and we have good defense with harsh winds.
Turn one Teemo is one of the most polarizing things ever. You're covered. I can still shoot this down. It is a bit of a nuisance. But the problem is the Grand Plaza. The problem is the Grand Plaza. I, I have to respect the Grand Plaza. Because otherwise my board will be wiped. If only I had a troll chant. If I had a troll chant, that would be amazing. May as well mystic this. I I, I won't be able to. I I won't be able to aftershock next turn. So I, I do continue to progress the level up. Very important. Sejuani could be a legit Wincon. Witness perfection, meatbags. And now we have the ability. Okay, so they don't have Grand Plaza on curve. Every wave is a path. So that means we hit the uh, the misfortune. Bit annoying, but System upgrade. Join me if you want to live. I don't want him to get to yet easier. I can take this out. I'm gonna go Ezreal. Ezreal can do two things, can help me plunder this turn for Sujuani. Sounds dangerous. I'm in. Obviously the sh uh, threat of sharp sight is a thing. Stop me. The ocean charts our course. I kinda just wanna deal with this though. It's definitely a problem. Especially now that we have, especially now that we have uh, troll chant. Double troll chant goes a long way here. Okay, so we do have this to block, anyways. We won't be able to take on. I think double troll chant may be the way to go before, because you know? I don't think harsh winds quite cuts it here. By going for Ignition, I prevent him from attacking with these scouts. damage that's a lot of damage but I do have I do have frostbite the problem is the moment he draws into a misfortune I am I, I am putting a bit of a clock and stuff but could you maybe speed things up a little uh, let me think here for a second easy my boy let's go with this Just in time. Just on time, baby. Carved from the savage cold. All right, let's mess some folks up. Stand and fight. I am the future. Beautiful. 
Beautiful! The moment he develops. <laughs> Is the moment war punish. Yeah, he has to open attack. He has no choice. He has to open attack. He's dealing damage to this. I wonder why. He's trying to set he's trying to set up a a concerted strike, isn't he? Got him. We survived. Oh my god, that was a that was an awesome game. <laughs> maybe maybe I'm a little bit biased, but that was sick. Really, really like this deck. Uh, I think triple aftershock is a necessity in this meta because anything like 50% of the meta is like Grand Plaza, so, and, and there's other people experimenting with other landmarks, so just, this is the best landmark removal in the game, and uh, it definitely is a must in this deck. Sejuani, sometimes I would like to have Sejuani as a 3 of, but like that one off of Ezreal, man, it puts in so much work. You guys saw there, at that point, as we leveled up, every ignition represented 2 damage, right? And we can, consist we can also like enable the, the plunder as well. It, it, being an elusive is such a good target for like Starlet Seer too. I really like these distributions. I really like iterative improvement as well. Really flexible. And uh, overall super happy with the deck. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it as much uh, as I did playing it. And uh, try it out. You know, different take on, on Teemo. And I, I will always, like I'm always a big advocate of Teemo Sejuani. I think it's the, the most competitive uh, version of Teemo. And uh, a very, very fun one at that, because Sejuani is a very good champion that, uh, you know, has fallen a little bit from, from grace. It's not like she's not, she's amazing, but she doesn't she doesn't see as much play as she deserves, I think. So that's where I'll end this video at, I guess. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you tomorrow.